All right, hello everybody. This is John Hansen with FloridaPhysique.com. This is the Florida Physique Report. Today is Thursday, August 21st, 2014. And on today's show, we're going to do a recap of the MPC Florida State, which took place last weekend on August 16th out in Orlando, Florida. Deke Warner put on another great show. We're going to go over that. And our interview of the week is Nicole Sturtz. Nicole Sturtz is an IFBB figure pro. She trains right here at the Powerhouse Gym in downtown Tampa, and she just got her pro card this year at the Team Universe in the Masters Division, and she's going to be doing her first pro show in November 7th, I believe, in Kentucky, the Kentucky Pro Show. So we're going to talk to Nicole about her training and her diet and what she took to get her pro card. She's made remarkable progress over the last couple of years. Uh, I do want to mention uh, we also got a couple new videos over at FloridaPhysique.com. Janine Lankowski, who's an IFBB pro women's bodybuilder, just competed in the Tampa Pro. We shot a great shoulder training video with her the day after the Tampa Pro, so you want to check that out. We've also got another video coming up with uh, Stephanie Noriega, who is a figure competitor on the amateur level. She also competed that weekend of the Tampa Pro. She was in the Tim Gardner extravaganza. So we got a uh, leg and back training video with Stephanie. That'll be coming up this weekend, so watch out for those. I do want to mention our new sponsors. We've got uh, two new sponsors here at FloridaPhysique.com, and we really appreciate their sponsorship. DNC Supplements, which is a supplement store out here in Tampa, Florida. they got two locations now, and uh, they're big supporters of the bodybuilding community out here in Florida, especially in the Tampa area. So they're on board with FloridaPhysique.com. We want to thank them. Also, Blackstone Labs. Uh, my friend Aaron Singerman started that company about a year ago. They are going gangbusters, and they are also sponsoring our contest interviews every weekend when we're out covering the shows. Blackstone Labs is our official sponsor for that, so I want to thank them for coming on board. Uh, this weekend, we've got the Lakeland Classic out in Lakeland, Florida. Debbie Callahan is the promoter. That'll be on August 23rd. Uh, Debbie is an MPC judge as well as a promoter. She's almost judging almost every single weekend, and uh, her Lakeland Classic should be a good show. We'll be out there this weekend covering it, so look for coverage of the Lakeland Classic uh, coming up this Sunday. All right, so that's what's coming up this weekend. Um, let's go over the Florida State. This was a great show. I think this was Deke Warner's either his 16th or his 17th year promoting the show. He always does a great job. Um, I want to mention the, some of the competitors and the winners in those divisions. There was some really good competition, particularly in the men's bodybuilding and the men's physique open. They had some really great competitors, some really tough decisions, one-point decisions in a lot of the classes. Uh, Deke started off the show with a little bit of a surprise. He brought all the judges up on stage and he had um, some Hawaiian dancers come out with uh, somebody playing the, the bongo drums and they did a little Hawaiian dance and then they got the judges involved, they pulled them in and uh, Pete Fancher and uh, Tim Gardner was up there but he, he got out of it and he, pulled, he brought Tony Curtis over and a few of the other judges did a little dancing with them so that was, that was pretty fun to start to the evening. Uh, let's go over the competition itself and talk about the winners. 60 division was, was won by Robert Smith, who looked really good. Uh, the over 50 division was incredible. Really, really good competition. There was only three competitors, but all of them were top notch. The winner, Andre Vaughn, has been competing since 1983, and he took quite a few years off due to some injuries, but he's been back the last couple of years. He's been doing really well. He won the Masters division in the Southern States a few years ago. He's also competed in the Masters Nationals. He looked uh, really, really good. He was big, he was hard, and he won the over 50 division. He beat out Ursay Phillips, who tr actually trains here at the Powerhouse in downtown Tampa. Ursay's got a uh, really good physique. It's very aesthetic looking, but he's got really big arms. He's hard as a rock. So he was in second place, and Roscoe Young, who also looked great. Um, I don't know how old he is, but he looked fantastic. Very hard, very ripped. He was in third place. The over 40 division also had a couple really good competitors. Jeff Marquette won the class. Jeff's a real tall, wide guy, hard as a rock, and he beat out Miguel Dorta. Miguel is a uh, smaller guy, but he was shredded, probably the most shredded guy of the whole night. He was in really incredible shape. The over 35 division was won by Jesse Dean. Jesse has been making his comeback the last couple weeks. He won the overall at the Beach Bodies Classic a few weeks ago. And then he won his class, the heavyweight class, at the Dexter Jackson Open. So Jesse looks really good. I think he actually looked his best out of all three competitions. He looked his best at the Florida State. He was really rock hard, but he's really full also. He beat out Marks Meek, 
who was uh, also in really good condition, not as big as Jesse, but Marks was really in uh, really good condition, really ripped. Then in the overall, it was sort of a surprise, Andre Vaughn, the over 50 winner, won the overall. He beat out the over 30, over 35 and the over 40 divisions. So he was uh, ecstatic when he won. We got a great interview with Andre on FloridaPhysique.com, so check that out. Uh, moving over to the novice men's bodybuilding, Carson Humphreys was the winner there. The teen men bodybuilding was really competitive this time. I've, I've talked before on this show about how uh, sometimes the teen men bodybuilding doesn't have enough competitors, and I'm hoping that the teen division comes back in bodybuilding to be where it was back like in the 80s when it was really big. But they had five good competitors in the teenage bodybuilding. The winner, Marcus Lewis, actually goes to the same high school where the contest was being held, Olympia High School. So that was really cool, and it was even cooler to see him win the show because he totally did not expect to win, and he was shocked when he won. So that was a, that was a good moment on stage. David Moran was in second place. David had a good physique, very proportionate, good legs, good thickness for a teenage competitor. And Dylan Steinberg got third. Dylan, uh, Dylan's got the look on stage. He's got it down. He's got the smile, the good hair, looked at the judges, made good eye contact. For a teenage competitor, he's, he's got that down. A lot of other competitors could learn from him. In the women's bodybuilding division, uh, Jennifer Flores took first place. Jennifer had a really good physique, really good posing routine also. Sort of reminded me of Sheila Black a couple weeks ago at the Tampa Pro. She was doing a lot of artistic poses, and uh, she had a very uh, muscular physique, but also very aesthetic. Um, could even make the transition to women's physique. She decided to do that. Um, novice figure division went to Kelly McCauley. The Masters figure, the over 50, was won by Michelle Leon, who looked really good. Over 40 was won by Nida Moyet, who also had really good shape, good aesthetics. And the over 30 went to Jordana Alanon. Jordana also, uh, she's actually the fiance of men's bodybuilding competitor Jesse Dean. And Jordana's been doing very well over the last couple weeks. She won her class at the Beach Bodies and also the Dexter. This time she won the over 30 and she won the overall. So it was good to see her win the overall in her third show. Jordana's got a very proportionate, symmetrical physique and she should do very well in the future. Going over to the bikini division in the novice bikini, a lot of competitors in this division. Sandra Acosta took first place. In the master's bikini over 30, Amy Lindsay won first place and she looked really good. And the Masters women's physique, Bonnie Westcott, who used to compete in women's bodybuilding, has now switched over to women's physique and has done it very successfully. You wouldn't know, you wouldn't know it by looking at her, but Bonnie is actually over 60 years old. It looks incredible. Skin is really tight, really ripped. She's always in condition. Her husband, Phil, is, also competes in the men's bodybuilding, and he's always in great shape. Phil is always shredded. Uh, he didn't compete tonight. He was out in the audience watching Bonnie. And the Masters men's physique, over 50, Perry Hoff took first place, and then in the Masters Men's Physique over 40, Frank Same took first place, and then Frank won the overall. We got a chance to do an interview with Frank for FloridaPhysique.com. Uh, I think I mentioned here on the show before, me and Frank actually competed in the Southern States back in 1987. Frank won the middleweight class uh, that night, and he has made the transition very successfully over to Men's Physique as a Masters competitor. So we talked to him a little bit more in detail about how he did that on our interview. Uh, moving over to the figure open division on class A, Jordana Alanon took first place again. Class B was Diana Simmons, who looked really good. She had very good shape, and she was also in really good condition. Class C went to Nada Moyet, who also won the over 40. And class D went to Michelle Leon, who won the over 50. And then again, Jordana Alanon won her second overall victory of the night. She won the figure open overall. Moving over to the women's physique, uh, the open division was won by Tanya Griffith, who got a unanimous score from the judges, all first place votes, was in really good shape, good development, and really, really cut. Uh, Bonnie Westcott, who won the Masters, took second place in the open division. And the men's physique open, really tough division. I think they had more competitors in the men's physique open at the Florida State than any other division. In the short class, Jose Rodriguez took first place. Jose wasn't one of the bigger guys on, in the class, but he was very cut, very small waistline. Seems like that's where they're going with the men's physique. If you've got a really small, tight waist, even if you're not muscularly one of the bigger guys, you could still win first place. So Jose got first place there. Les Foster was second place. Les won uh, his class at both the Dexter and the uh, Beachbody's Classic. So he was in second here tonight. 
In the medium class, Luquan Burnell, who won the overall at the Dexter Jackson, took again first place. He beat Tony Candelis, who looked really good. Tony has really a big guy, very cut, and I believe it was pretty close in that class between those two, but Luquan took first place in that. The tall class was a one-point decision. Adrian Richards, who took the overall to Beach Bodies Classic, and actually took second to Luquan at the Dexter. He won the tall class and he beat out Eric Fernandez. Eric was a class winner at the Tim Gardner Extravaganza. So uh, he did also really good here. That was a one point decision, so very close. Then in the overall, Adrian Richards took first place in the overall. So I think Adrian looked uh, even better than he did at the Beach Bodies Classic. He was hard as a rock, he was full, looked really, really good. Going over to the Bikini Open, which is always a tough division, always a tough class. Uh, Ella Kapul Jenkins, who took second place in both the Masters and the Novice, went in Class A in the Bikini Open and took first place there, so congratulations to her. Class B went to Amy Lindsay, who also won the over 30, and Class C went to Courtney Garbo, and finally Class D went to Marbelli Penton. The overall Bikini Open went to Amy Lindsay, who won uh, two, two overall victories at this show, so she's doing really well. Okay, now we go over to the men's open bodybuilding. Again, very, very competitive as it should be. The Florida State is the state title, so you know a lot of good bodybuilders are going to show up for this contest. Um, they're all trying, a lot of them are trying to get national qualifications to compete on the national level. Started off with a bantamweight class, only two competitors, but they looked really, really good. Kenny Ishikawa, who won the lightweight class at the Beach Bodies. He took first place over Shane Gilbertson. And Shane, if you remember, took first place overall at the Sunset Classic a couple months ago. Two different physiques. Kenny's a little shorter and a little thicker, but he was really rock hard. He was in good shape. Shane Gilbertson is a taller guy, um, but also shredded, really in good condition. I can't say any good things enough about both of these guys. They were both in top condition. Kenny took first place this time. In the lightweight class, Miguel Dorta, who was second in the over 40 Masters, he won first place. Like I said, Miguel was shredded, man, the most shredded guy in the whole contest. Dylan Scheinberg, who was a teenage competitor, took second place. Welterweight class went to Vincent Russo. Vincent is a, a member of Team Freak Physique. He was out here doing his depletion workout with us uh, last week. And uh, Vincent really peaked for the show. He was in top shape. He was ripped but he was also really full and I th he was in top shape so uh, he won the class pretty decidedly. Tim Tevin was in second place in that class. In the middleweight division uh, Ryan Bangert took first place. Ryan was, uh, I remember him from the Dexter Jackson Classic. Another guy comes in really rock hard. He's got the most shredded glutes on stage and uh, Seth Benegi was in second place in that class. Light heavyweight division went to Thomas Motherway. Thomas was sort of a tall competitor for the class, real wide, but really hard, hard condition also. He actually beat out Andre Vaughn, who won the Masters overall. And Jeff Marquette, who won the over 40, was in third place. So that was a really tough division. Heavyweight class went to Jesse Dean. Again, Jesse was really in, in peak condition for this night. Really came in uh, top condition. He peaked perfectly. He was rock hard. He was full. Jesse's got a great front lat spread. When he does the front lat spread, his waist looks so small and his shoulders look so wide, so he was in great condition. Jesse Carter was in second place with Ted Voigt in third place. And then finally, the super heavyweight class, two really tall, big guys. They looked very similar almost. Stephen Reeve and Chris Plucherik. Stephen Reeve took first place. Um, really great structure on Stephen. Really wide, big guy. I saw him walking around backstage. I was like, man, this guy looks like a monster. If he would have came in a little bit harder, he could have had a good shot for the overall, but he won the super heavyweight class. The overall was won by Jesse Dean. So we got a good interview with Jesse and his fiance, Jordana Alanon, and that's on the FloridaPhysique.com. Uh, this weekend again, the Lakeland Classic out in Lakeland, Florida, promoted by Deborah Callahan, August 23rd. Hope to see you guys out there. We will be covering that show. We'll have the full photo report up and interviews with all the winners. We'll have that up on Sunday. So check that out this weekend on floridaphysique.com and we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we're going to be joined by Nicole Sturtz, IFBB Figure Pro who's going to talk about her training and diet in detail to tell us how she got her pro card. This is John Hanson with Florida Physique Report. We'll be right back. All right we're back with Florida Physique Report and my special guest today is Nicole Sturtz who is a new IFBB pro. She trains right here at the Powerhouse Gym 
Congratulations on getting your pro Thank card to call. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, let's talk about that. Let's talk about how you got your pro card. It was at the Masters Nationals, right? No, Team Universe. Oh, Team Universe. I'm sorry. That's okay. The Masters part of the Team Universe. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I did Masters and the Open. You did? Okay. Mm-hmm. <coughs> now, last year, you did the Florida State. And you made great improvements from the year before. How many years have been competing now? Let's start there. Well, I did bikini back in 2009. Okay. Um, and then I stopped for a few years. And 2012, I did my first figure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you went from bikini in 2009 to figure in 2012. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now before that, you were running, right? Or were you running in between? Um, well, 2012, I stopped running and solely focused on figure competi okay. um, yeah. competing. But from 2009 to 2012, yeah, running. Okay. Yeah, I was a stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Runner. So you had to really concentrate on putting on muscle. You had to learn mm -hmm. how to put on muscle because you went from long distance running and long competing distance. in bikini yep. to competing in figure. Exactly. So how did you do in 2012? 2012, um, it was more about the journey and seeing how my body could transform. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to Masters National. I placed... Um, 14, but okay. I wasn't even trying to place. Yeah. So, and then someone said, "Oh, you placed, you know, top 15 in your first national show. That's awesome." I'm like, "Oh wow, I guess that is." <laughs> but that sparked my interest, and that was like, "Wow, if I can do this, I want to see how far I can take it." So okay. I took a full year off, um, made huge improvements, enjoyed the training. It was kind of hard to get away from that running, but mm -hmm. um, didn't miss it too much. Yeah. And. I ended up winning my class um, in the, the Florida State, the Florida yeah. State in the Open and in the over 30. Okay. So that qualified me for nationals. I chose Team Universe, which gave me a full year um, to have a really great off season, a long off season to try to build. I needed to come in much fuller. So after winning the Florida State, you didn't go right into a national show like no. a lot of people. You took a whole year off. I okay. took over a year. Yeah. Yep. And. Um, and it actually was probably the hardest prep, even though I had so much time where mm -hmm. I didn't even know if I was going to be ready for it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I took a full year and I went to Team Universe and placed and won my pro card and it's been a dream come true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your training. What type of training did you do to put on muscle? Because I think this would be interesting for a lot of women out there who may be in figure. I see a lot of women who do both bikini and figure that compete so much and they really don't have an off season they stay lean all the time or women who don't really train that heavy which i guess some of them don't need to but in your case you need to put on muscle so yes i needed to train heavy i needed to slow down i needed to have long rest periods and um volume training but not lightweight volume training so okay. volume but heavy and heavy can be you know, five pounds to someone or 50 pounds, it's all relative. Right, so right. heavy to that person. Um, and now when you say volume training, how many sets is that? Oh, five to six, you know, it's some, um, I would do three, three mm -hmm. to four, but mm -hmm. you know, your big compound movements, you know, five to six sets. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, how many, I had How many days a week of training? Six to seven. Okay. Um, well, in the off season, I always had a day off. Yeah. You know, I would have like maybe a four day split, um, one day off, throw some yoga in there, and then one full rest day. Okay. Um, during prep, depending on how my body's looking, you know, no day off yeah. <laughs> to one day off. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how long would your off season last now? Let's if see. You were, if you were doing a contest from year to year. Yeah. My off season last year um, was end of July. So all I started my prep in say february okay i had a long off season where i gained 25 pounds mm -hmm. you know that struggle is real i tried a diet that was um high fat and i also had my treats when i wanted they you know so yeah it, it added up was that intentional gaining 25 pounds or no no okay. it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't and you know that whole bulking you needed to gain weight yeah. you don't need to gain weight and you know to bulk up right but unfortunately it happens mm -hmm. you know couldn't put down the peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a lot of work I had to do come February 1st. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, there was no cheating. There was no treat meals for six months. Yeah. And it was it was hard. So 
this off season, like right now I'm about seven pounds from stage and I feel good and that's where I want to stay and I don't want to go through that yeah. again. But this is a shorter period because you just got your pro card, now you're doing a pro show in November, right? Right, but even in November when I get ready for next year, I do not want to go over 10 pounds. I don't want to, your body, when you gain and lose, I mean your body, it doesn't bounce back, I think, yeah. the same way. Your yeah. skin changes, right. um, doesn't get as tight, and you got to work harder. Yeah. You know, you got to take away the food, you got to get more cardio. So to try to keep that weight to a manageable 8 to 10 pounds, yeah. you can have more food, quality food, and you don't have to have that um, cardio. Yeah. And you stay full. And I would imagine after a show, your metabolism is probably more jacked up anyway. So exactly. you can increase your calories and not get too fat and still use that calories to train yes. harder, right? Yeah, and you want to do it wisely. You know, as soon as I'm done the show, I go right back to my competition diet mm -hmm. and then add in a few more um, calories each day. Yeah. Like a couple hundred calories each day and slowly build up yeah. versus, up, oh, throw it out the window, <laughs> yeah. you know, let's go have this. Right, right. And then all of a sudden 12 pounds is on in yeah. a week and you feel gross. Yeah. And then it just it messes with your hormones and, you know, your head. Your head, yeah. Yeah. And that's got to be a good situation coming off a show and then still staying disciplined and then just slowly coming up because you can still see the muscularity, the yeah. cuts, you're not blown up, you know. Right. And that's why this prep I'm so um, excited to see because I've never gone into a prep, uh, I'm 12 weeks out and I've never gone into a prep seven pounds from stage weight. Yeah. So my yeah. calories are high, my cardio is low, um, so I don't have to worry about you know, depleting the calories and not being full and my glutes not getting tight. So yeah. I'm really excited to see how my body's gonna change from It's not as stressful on your body, I would imagine, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so let's talk about your diet then for your pro show win. Um, how long did you diet for that? From last year? From last year? Yeah. February 1st until July 4th, and six that, months. And that was your hardest prep you said, huh? It was the hardest prep because I had 25 pounds to lose. Right. Um, and my body wasn't responding as it did in the past. Yeah. Um, it just was holding on. Like It was so easy for me to get conditioned the last prep before. Like the two weeks before, State. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I, I do like, I remember that. I yeah. was like flying high. I was doing no cardio. Right. I had tons of carbs. I mean, this prep, I mean, I had minimal carbs to, towards the end. Um, How much cardio? And cardio sometimes twice a day. Yeah. I mean, I know you hear bad stories but about you've it, but you gotta do it. You gotta yeah, do it. Right. You know, if you want those well, I remember talking to you in, about, I think it was like five or six weeks before the show, and you were saying, I'm a little behind, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So we had to um, do a carb rotation, a lot of low days. Okay. And um, I just worked my glutes every single day. I was on that stepper every day. Mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't do steady state. I made sure my heart rate was. Um, always above 150, mm -hmm. so I'm like 170, then rest, get back down 150, let it get back up. So I didn't do steady state, but I was up there squeezing those glutes, and wow. it finally came in. I did not do a, de, um, a carb load. Mm -hmm. um, I was full enough. Yeah. So we wanted not, we didn't want to get over full. Right. So do you typically do that carb completion and load? The last show, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. I mean, I, my body um, was just eating up everything, so I got to have, you know, every meal just carb after carb after carb and yeah. extra. This one, I basically had my same plan all the way up until I went on stage. There was no rice cakes and peanut butter backstage <laughs> yeah, either. Right, right. Didn't need it. Wow. Didn't need it. Well, I'm glad you uh, you got it because. I said this to you before, but I think you're one of the hardest trainers here at, at the gym, you know, and we got a lot of pros here and we got a lot of serious people here at the Powerhouse Gym. There's a lot of serious people here, but you, you really like train hard all the time. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love it. You yeah. know, I had a goal of, um, you know, putting everything I had into this and I sacrificed a lot before I, you know, hit a certain age number and mm -hmm. um, I just, I wanted to do it. I wanted to see if I could do it and yeah. so I gave it my all. So how did it feel going through that experience of getting your pro card? Tell us about that day, uh, the day on, on the stage. On the stage, I actually, I remember every single thing about walking up, doing my quarter turns and, you know, being um, switched around. But when they called my name, I blacked out. Like, I actually <laughs> did not, I, all of a sudden I heard Shannon Day say, knew I'd be, not, sorry, I'd be. <laughs> yeah, I'd be the pro, Nicole Sturtz. And I went, what, what? I'm like, 
I thought someone was joking. It was, right. And I hear my mom screaming <laughs> so loud. Right. And then I just woke up and I saw Dan Ray laughing like she doesn't even know. <laughs> it was an amazing yeah. experience. I yeah. was in a dream. Yeah, yeah. It was a dream come true. We, I just talked to uh, Kala Bellamore, who's from Australia, and she did her first pro show at the Tampa Pro in women's yeah. bodybuilding. And she said when she went up there, she missed the quarter turns. Like she was like in, oh. in, a, in a trance or something. And they told her quarter turn to the right and she turned. And then they said quarter turn to the right and she didn't hear him. And then he kept turning and her back was like her best body part. So she missed that oh, part. And then no. she thought, oh no, I screwed up. It's over, you know. And she ended up doing really well. She took fourth place. And Good for her. Yeah, so it was really. It, it gets nerve wracking up yeah, there. And sometimes yeah. those nerves can, you know, get the best of you. You just have to try to take a deep breath and think about you work so hard yeah. for this two minutes mm -hmm. you know not I know, even i know and people don't realize who've never competed the preparation is so intense and it's so hard i think that's why some people when they achieve their goal they break down and they cry you know because yeah. it's just it's so mentally and physically exhausting and like you said you only have a short time up there yeah so it's almost surreal when you're up there you know it's very emotional yeah yeah, yeah. it is you know because you you sacrifice a lot i mean obviously we're doing stuff that we want to do no yeah. one's making us right. doing it but to notice... But we're still miserable when we go through it. <laughs> see, I'm not actually miserable. No. I love the the prep. Yeah. Like, I'm kind of lost without that routine, that yeah. structure. Yeah. I'm a very, like, I, I'm a very structured person. Right. When I have too much time, I don't know what to do. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's very, it's very surreal up there, and you just have to, you know, take it easy and just uh, take a deep breath and mm -hmm. enjoy every single moment. So now you're getting ready for the, what show is it, the Kentucky? Kentucky Pro, yeah. Kentucky Pro, and you've got about about 11 weeks from this weekend, right? 11 and a half, yeah, from Saturday. 11. Yeah, so now you're eating a little more, and it's a little, not as crazy as a, as, a, as the uh, Team Universe was. No, 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 I'm having all my favorites. I mean, yeah. You know, tons of salmon, red right. meat, right. chicken. Right, right. Um, no white fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank goodness. Oh God, you missed um, that tilapia. Huh? <laughs> no, terribly, I miss it a lot. Yeah. Um, lots of carbs. I get a cheat, um, and I don't like to say cheat meal. But um, a treat meal once a week, mm -hmm. and I'll use it either um, on a back day or a leg day to push that food through the okay. workout. Okay. Um, and I get my beloved peanut butter for dessert after. <laughs> but you know what? I don't crave like someone. You know, oh, you gotta go get pizza and this and that. I don't like. No. I actually crave salmon, sweet potato. Yeah. But the only thing is, I want to put peanut butter on the potato. Yeah, right. I don't want you know. But like, you've been eating junk. clean for so long. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know, I miss my you know carbs and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But so, how many pounds do you have left to lose now and for this prep? I am. To where um, you want to be? Well, I don't necessarily go by that number on the scale okay because it, it changes all the time yeah it's how my body's looking mm -hmm. how tight I am how conditioned I am mm -hmm. but I am right now seven pounds from where I was on stage in July okay so probably seven pounds okay I don't expect to be any bigger yeah. than last time but I want to come in tighter more conditioned even though I was pretty conditioned but just to look fuller yeah because I'll be able to have more food um, the muscles will be more dense how do you judge if you're ready or not? Do you do it yourself or do you have a contest prep who I have a nutrition who? coach uh -huh. who looks at me weekly okay. and um, adjusts my menu plan and tells me what to do for cardio. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I do my own weight training program on my own. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's your opinion and your contest prep coach. Opinion. Yeah. I mean, 90% his opinion on, okay. yeah. Okay. On whether you're ready or not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because we have that self doubt, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, like, it's hard to it's hard to judge I'm not yourself. Ready. I'm not gonna be ready. Yeah. Look at yeah. those glutes, and yeah. you know, I think he's got a better eye for that mm -hmm. because we judge ourselves a little bit differently. Right. You know, right. I could look at a stage and see all the girls and critique them and know, but when you look at yourself, it's a little different. I yeah. Think. Yeah. You want that other opinion. And before the team universe, you also went and got some posing instruction, right? From Candace Keen, you went to one of her yeah. workshops. Yep, worked yeah. with her. Yeah. Yeah, and that was great. Learned a lot. Right. So, so that helps with your presentation on stage. And, definitely, yeah. definitely. And that's something that can always be improved on. Mm -hmm. And I, I need to work on that a little bit more. Yeah. A lot more. Um, so I hope to work with her again. I okay. know she's not going to be doing anything in September because of the Olympia. Yeah. But after right. that, I hope to get with her a few times. Okay. And nail it. Now, one of the things, we did a training uh, video about a year ago before that Florida State, and we yeah. did it on your back. 
Yeah. And you said that was like the one body part you really improved because you didn't have, and that's what you needed. You needed the back more from the, mm -hmm. the back positions. And one of the things I remember you said you worked on was the chin-ups, right? Yeah. Because you said you couldn't do any chin-ups and you just kept working at them. Right, right. So what were you doing? You were doing like, you were just doing one at a time until you eventually... When I first, yeah, I can do one on my own. I yeah. do the assisted, I do the bands. Which like, a lot of women are the same. Yeah. yeah they, they don't have the strength to do that, yeah. So I suggest always start with the assisted and focus and, and get that muscle-mind connection right. instead of just trying to pull yourself up there. And then one day grab the bands. The bands have different resistance. Grab the one with the thickest resistance. Also do the muscle-mind connection, really feel the lats. Yeah. And then one day remove the band and just try one. You'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. um, from there, get rid of the band and do negatives. Mm -hmm. So jump up, hold, slowly lower yourself oh, okay. down. Yeah, to develop your strength. Eventually, you'll be able to do one, then two. And that's how I improved, and I did it every single day. And then I was doing three sets of pull-ups and three sets of chin-ups. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah, great. Yeah, of 15. So yeah. I was doing 60 reps mm -hmm. on my workout. Nicole, well, we wish you the best of luck at the Kentucky Pro November 8th. you got yes. about 11 weeks, so mm -hmm. we wish you the best of luck. I think you're going to do really well. And congratulations again on getting your pro card. Thank you so much, John. It was John. well deserved. So thanks for joining us on the Florida Physique Report. For Nicole Sturts, this is John Hansen, and we'll see you next week.